Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What a beautiful morning so far. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I'm really excited. I'm really excited because the Holy Spirit is doing a new thing. Amen. Holy Spirit is doing a new thing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we just come before you. We're giving you the glory, the honor, oh God. We just want to thank you, Lord, for such a beautiful morning that we've had so far in this beautiful Father's Day, oh God. Let us remember that everything that we have of you is a gift from you, oh God. Let us not take for granted what you do for us, Heavenly Father. Lord, Father God, we thank you that you are Abba, Father, oh God. Lord, Father God, we just ask you right now that as I share this word that you deposited in my heart, oh Lord, that you would decrease me and increase you, oh God. Let it be all you oh god lord father god if there's something that is not supposed to come out of my mouth lord father god seal it shut forever lord i thank you i love you and i give you all the glory and all the honor and i pray this in jesus name amen and amen amen and amen hallelujah we've had such a beautiful time of testimony and of being in the word and you know god is a beautiful thing and, and you know if nothing else remember that your voice matters remember that anything that comes out of your mouth matters why because god has deposited it in you hallelujah so i just want to just thank everyone um today is as i said it's happy father's day and, and it's also juneteenth amen is juneteenth and so we get to celebrate our brothers and sisters amen and we get to understand history hallelujah but today i want to talk to you about you know i was <laughs> i was so excited when pastor had uh last week uh the day before i was like pastor please you see i call my husband pastor i'm like pastor please please can you preach right because i was in, in service and he said sure and, and his topic was about the luggage right and so i started laughing because i was like wow i i had already part of the sermon that i wanted to share and it's pack your bags you're evicted right and so this is um i'm so uh it, it grateful because we are in alignment with what god wants us to do amen so you know what pack your bags you are evicted as we celebrated right uh the remembrance of the holy spirit two weeks ago my prayer since then has been that you become more aware of his presence especially the last couple of weeks right and so i gotta tell you this ministry is experiencing a movement of the holy spirit a true pentecost movement amen we just get to really pay attention and see what God is doing, amen. And so I just wanna remind us that in Matthew 28, uh, verses 18 through 20, it says, then Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Notice it doesn't say just the Father, it doesn't say just the Son, and it doesn't say just the Holy Spirit. But then we also get to teach them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the end of the age. Amen, hallelujah. So the end of the age is when Jesus comes back. Hallelujah, that'll be the end of our age. And so we, you know, some people are saying, well, what's my purpose? What am I supposed to do? Well, until you figure out what your, your purpose on this world is, remember that we already have a command, right? And that is to give disciples, right? To make disciples of who? Of God, hallelujah. And so we, we get to remember that he, right, has given us all power, amen? Hallelujah, he's given us all power, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's given us all power. Hallelujah. To do what? To do his perfect will, which is to go out and make disciples. Hallelujah. Disciples for who? For him, not for us. Amen. Not for us. Hallelujah. And if we continue, right, we're reminded in Matthew that Jesus speaks in parables because the people do not see, hear, or understand. The reason for their inability to comprehend is their rejection of Jesus right so we can't oftentimes understand what the word of god is because we're still rejecting jesus amen and we're reminded about that in matthew and i also want to remind you that he gives us many gifts listen to this and uh, the reminder is in matthew chapter 25 verses 14 through 30 and it says the master gave and to and to one he gave five talents and to another two and to another one to each according to his own ability Aha, listen he's going to give you your talents according to your own ability 
You see, some of you are stuck in, if the Holy Spirit doesn't tell me to move, I'm not moving. But you see, he's telling you, you have the ability already to do that of which he has sent you to do. Hallelujah. You see, this is a beautiful thing according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. So what did he do? What, what he was able to do, so in the little bit that he had and god gave him more according to what to his own ability amen and so and likewise he who had received two gained two more also but he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hit the lord's money after a long time the lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them mm. what will you do with the talents the lord has given you you see, I want to speak to the person who is still guarding that talent, who's still questioning that talent because they don't believe that they have the ability within them. Even though the word of God, even though God has told us that he's going to give us a talent according to the ability in us. Amen. Who gives us the ability? Holy Spirit. Right. So what will you do with the talents the Lord has given you? You see, because those that are faithful with a little, he will give more. How many of you can say, I have been faithful with a little and he's given me more? Amen. How many? Many of us. You see, he wants to do a new thing. I don't know if you guys are seeing this. He wants to do a new thing. People get unstuck. Amen. Let me remind you what it says in Mark uh, chapter 2, this verse 22 it says and no and no one pours new wine into old wine skins otherwise the wine will burst the skins and both the wine and the wine and wine skins will be ruined no they pour new wine into new skins amen so god is doing something new we need to take heed of what he's doing and sometimes we just need to slow down and do not get ahead of god because we don't want to later on say god bless this mess right because we're too busy running ahead some of you have been faithful and he wants to pour into you but you're too busy questioning who you are in god yes he wants to expand your territory how many of you have been praying for expansion not just in ministry but expansion at work but if you're not faithful with the little talents how is he going to give you more see he wants to give you more talents because of your faithfulness what say you are you still going to stay there and question him how will you respond how are you responding will you multiply your talents or bury them will you pour out or will your waters become stale jesus you know when god gave me this particular word and 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 i thought about stale waters you know what happens with stale water right pestilence happens with stale water right if, if, whenever we leave, we see water in the street right and and it's sitting there right what happens is sometimes you know we'll see murkiness or we'll see flies if there's any what's contained in that water but then you know what happens it also dries up it also dries up so what's happening what's happening with what he's pouring into you oh people of god you don't hear me what is happening are you allowing the waters to flow or are they becoming stale huh are they stagnant you see god is calling you to transform you shall transform first so that others can see your transformation hallelujah the transformation is not for you alone but it's for the testimony it's your testimony that will serve others the test you went through is your testimony. The test that had you think that you were going, it was going to take you out is the testing that's going to support others. You see, the word says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You see, people need to hear you. 
people need to hear about and those gifts that are deposited in you. You have talents. God gave them to you. The gifts given to you are not for you. <laughs> you see some of you like, what do you mean they're not for me? Oh, no, you're included in it, right? You're included in the gift thing, but they're for others. Some of you want to be leaders with your gifts, but you need to understand that your gifts and talents have been given to you to serve others. <laughs> Jesus Christ came to serve others. Jesus came to serve others. How? Well, some ways that he served was that he prayed for others. He led people to his father, right? He washed people's feet. Now, did he have to do any of this? Absolutely not. But he was a leader called to serve. Amen. He was the perfect example of what is like to be a servant leader. So people of God, the higher you go, the more of a servant you become. And that's not just in ministry, that's in work too, right? If you are the CEO of an organization and you get that you have been, that you're there to serve the people so that they can do what they need to do to do their job, then your, your battle is half won. But if you want to rule with an iron fist, that's not servant. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, it tells us each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in the various forms. You see, he, we're able to serve because of his grace. We're able to serve because of his grace. Hallelujah. That's why we're able to serve. Not because of who we are and what we say we do, but because he's given us the grace to do so. He has given us the talent. You see, he gives us a new heart. And so he, when we pray for others, when we share the gospel, let's pray for their heart. Right? So you see, he wants to give you a new heart, not only you, but the people of, that are around you. Pray that God softens up people's heart. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Amen. Hallelujah. In Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26, it says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. Hallelujah. Who are we speaking of? The Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You know that little voice that sometimes tells you, don't cross, don't do that. And, and, and we want to say, oh, right? That's the Holy Spirit warning you right because not only is he going to give you a new heart he's going to give you a new spirit and it says i will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh people of god why was it a heart of stone well because we didn't believe amen it's like you know what what i just got now the vision of the tin man if i only had a heart but the heart was in him already he just needed to be reminded how many of you need to be reminded that God wants to do a new thing? The Holy Spirit wants to do a new thing in you. You see, we were created to do good works. In Ephesians, it says, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do God's work, which God prepared in advance for us to do. You see, ha, people, you have been created with a purpose and a reason. People are waiting for you. People are waiting for you. How many of you have walked into a room and said, oh my God, God just answered my prayers. Or I was just thinking about that. See, some of you are walking this planet because you don't believe in yourself, but you are your ancestors' ancestors' dreams. We're celebrating Juneteenth today. Do you honestly think that the celebration didn't come as a result of a prayer of our ancestors in that time. And now we have a holiday to celebrate it. Yeah, we still have a lot of work to do. We're not blind to that, but we're scratching the surface. You see, you are an answered prayer to someone. I'm here to remind you not to forget the gifts that God has deposited in you. 1 Timothy chapter 4, 14 says, do not neglect your gift. You see, we're good at neglecting our gift. You'll probably say, no, I don't even know what my gift is. You already have the first gift, which is to go out there and spread the gospel. 
right? But some of you have neglected the gift that has been given to you for a very long time. It says, do not neglect your gift, which was given you through prophecy when the body of the elders laid hands on you. <laughs> some of you are sitting here saying, ah, but some of you have been. You're too busy chasing other things. You're too busy making other things your priority. But still, God deposited a talent in you. And you're, you're out there waiting. You're waiting. And it's getting stagnant. And it's still water. So let us not lean on our own understanding and walk our own walk. But allow us to let us to be ordained. Let him ordain our steps. Amen. I love the scripture. It says in Proverbs 16, 9, in their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. The hope we have as Christians is that we have access to choosing to accept God's peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen. It surpasses all understanding. So what are you doing with your gifts? Are you hiding them? Have you made the, 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 the ditch so deep that now you can't even go and get it anymore? There's people waiting for you. Pack your bags, you've been evicted. You see, some of you are in positions and, and you're wondering why you're stuck in these positions and it's because the assignment was already done and you're still looking for things where the thing, you're looking for the gift, you, you're looking to be rewarded in a place that the reward is not there, it's outside of that. You're stuck, you're stuck, get unstuck, amen. God wants you. He's calling you. There's so many beautiful things that he has in store for you. Just dare to believe. You know, if you don't believe in yourself, believe in he, in him. Greater is he that's in you, that's in the world. Amen. He's greater, far greater. How many of you have said, you know, you work yourself up to do something and then all of a sudden it's like you did not and you're like, oh, that's all to it. Because the build up, right? Because you build Goliath, Goliath, instead of, of saying, having that faith of a mustard seed that the mountain will be moved. Amen. See, we get to choose. You get to choose today. Hallelujah. You get to choose today. Amen. You know, and I want to share um, this quote. And, and, I, and I want you to really meditate on this. And it says, when I stand before God at the end of my life, I would hope that I would not have a single bit of my talent left and could say, I used everything you gave me. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. What would you say? That's not my quote. That's Shedwick wow. Bosman. And some of you know him as the Black Panther. Hmm. Okay. See, this is the thing. I'm going to repeat it again. When I stand before God at the end of my life, I would hope that I would have a single, I would have, I, I would not have a single bit of talent left. And I could say, I use everything you gave me. Amen. Let us not have a backpack. Let us not have a little uh, bag with a talent. Let us, you know what? Let it be spent. Let it be spent. Amen. I would love to pray for you. Heavenly Father, I, I just want to thank you. I thank you, Lord, for the talents that you've given us, oh God, for the gifts, oh God, that you've given us. Let us realize, oh Lord, that these talents and gifts are not for us. We're included, but they're for the, your people, oh God. Lord, Father God, you give us the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit so that we can edify others, oh God. Let us not have to... Uh, uh, put them away, oh God, because we feel we're not enough. You called us because we are more than enough to do your will, oh God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you make those hearts ready to, to receive those that get to receive your word, that get to receive you in their hearts, oh God. I thank you for this time, and I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would just continue to touch us, oh God. Let us be faithful with the little so you can give us more, oh God. You are the God of the increase, Lord Jesus. We have to do our part as well, oh Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord Father God, for 
this time and I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you touch each and every person that is hearing my voice right now oh God that you would to make them ready oh God let them step outside of themselves let not fear be their portion oh God but let the, the, the glory that you have for them Lord Jesus shine before them I thank you for the light that they have in them Lord Father God that light is you Lord so let them not lean on their own understanding but to always understand that you are in the midst that you are making a way where there is no way that you are the great I am you make the impossible possible oh Lord so I just want to thank you Lord I thank you for what you're doing I pray that the hearts are ready to receive oh God and I pray Lord Jesus for a, a pouring even more so of the Holy Spirit Lord let us have a true Pentecost experience Lord Jesus Lord Father God I thank you and I give you the glory if there is anyone that's hearing right now and has not given their life to Christ who do not know what who is this Christ I speak of I invite you to give your life to him and if for those of you that might have backslid or might have turned away and you want to rededicate your life again please do so it's a real simple prayer it's 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 lord i acknowledge that i'm a sinner and i acknowledge that god gave us jesus to die on the cross and because he died on the cross i have everlasting life i am redeemed from my sins you have made my garments clean again oh god and lord father god i just want to thank you and it's that simple my prayer is that you find yourself a bible believing ministry a believing ministry that believes in God's word. Amen. And if you need support in finding that, feel free. We will plug you in. The beauty of this ministry is that we are doing something new, right? Because God is pouring new wineskins into pouring new wine into new wineskins. And so we are connected with various parts of the world. Amen. So wherever you're listening from, we have brothers and sisters in Pakistan and Africa. And so we just want to support you in, in continuing your walk with God. We love love you and we pray all of these things in Jesus name hallelujah hallelujah praise you Jesus yes Lord yes Lord hallelujah thank you Lord